Hello and welcome to Infinity. Here's a novel way of selection which gets around a bit of a problem. Supposing I wanted to select this pool here. Um, I could do that by clicking around it and fading, but it sort of fades out. It's difficult to get that you know, fady bit. So it's nice to be able to sort of select by the blue. So you might think, OK, let's do select, select sample colour, and we click in here. And we can sort of play around with this here to get whatever that's going to be, because get the right colour. I can maybe play around with the tolerance a bit. Um, let's come back in a bit there. But it's not clear the actual area being selected because the dotted line only shows we're up to like 50% transparency and, and it goes all the way back. So if I apply that, let's see what that means. Because I could say, oh, look, there's some selected up there. We can take the selection brush, make that nice and big, click on subtract and can wipe that out. There we go. So that's kind of looking OK. But a good way to look at what's being selected is if I hit Q. And Q it puts everything else red and it looks, well, I'm not sure about some of the stuff around here, so let's turn Q off again and let's go to a paintbrush. And if I get a, just an ordinary paintbrush, it's in black. Make sure that's black. And when I paint now, it'll paint only into the selected area, so nothing's going to happen over here. So even just holding it over there, you can see if I paint around the whole thing there, look how much is actually being selected. There's a huge amount beyond this, and I've not really selected the pool that well. So let's start some undoing. Go back to the beginning. Right, now then, what else can we do? And the way we can do this, let's hit Control J, get a duplicate layer, and I'm going to go to HSL. And why HSL? And it's because in here you've got a way of selecting colour. You haven't got this circular device in the uh, Select by Sample colour, but we can use it. So what I'd like to do is to use the picker, but that doesn't work at the moment until I select one of these. Actually, it doesn't matter which you select, but let's select the blue because that's in the right area. Then I click on the picker, and I can click in the blue here, and this moves around to that area. Now then, if I want to see what has actually been selected, and this is a useful technique anyway, I can change the hue to something that's going to be really contrasting. And let's go around there. Oh, that's a really bright sort of magenta -y colour there. You can see where the edges of that. And you can actually see this seems to be pretty much nothing down here. There's a bit up there in the sky. So that's great. I've selected that, but it only lets me change the hue and thing. I can't keep the selection, so I need to force it to do that. And the way to do that is go down to the blend mode here and go down to difference. It subtracts one from the other. In other words, it shows just that which has changed. So I hit the difference there and I've done with HSL now and you can see this has selected this in here. It's got a bit selected up there. Don't worry about that. The key thing is this has not got all the, the other rubbish around it. So so what do I want to do? I want to, I'd like to end up with this as a mask so that looks a bit black and white. Let's try the threshold and I can just drag this along here until this starts appearing. And that's not bad, but it's a very harsh edge to it. It's it would be nice to have something which is a bit more gradual and fading. So I could always paint that stuff out up there. So I'm not going to use that. So a, a, a very similar one is to use levels. So now, I don't want to use the black level, because that's just going to make the whole thing disappear. I want to bring the white down. So it's until I get down here, and I see it's getting brighter and brighter. So in other words, this is a very more clear selection here. Again, I can get rid of the stuff above there. And that looks, yeah, that looks pretty much OK. Um, because I'm also using the live, the um, dynamic ones here, you can go back and change these. You can change your mind, even go back to the HSL. But let's, we're going to make a, Mask. So let's just put a black and white on there, and this shows how it's going to be selected. That's still OK. So yeah, I put that that's gone above there. So let's just drag that into this one here. There it is.
Right, so now I just want to flatten that layer and the way to do that is right click and rasterize there and I'm just going to paint away this top layer here so I get the paintbrush just on black and paint that away so I've now got that selected. Now I can right click and rasterize to mask. I could have done the same in the mask but there we go. So this is selecting this down here. I'll pull at the bottom to keep it out the way so I can just see the original picture here. Now I'll add a something just 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 to a simple brightness and contrast here. I'm going to put that up the top there. Then I can take the mask and put the mask on that. So now I'm masking my brightness and contrast control. So now when I change this, I'm only changing that pool. And so I can get this exactly where I want. It fades off nicely to the end. I can put whatever contrast I like onto it. So there I've got nice faded control all the way around to the edge of the pool. How about that? That's a really useful little technique. Thank you very much for watching.